up, what up, man? It's your boy Shy. Shy vs. Everybody Podcast, episode 98. Man, mm. two, two away from that 100 mark, dog. Damn, that's a, that jump went by fast. But uh, today, man, we got a special guest in the building, man. We got digital marketer, motivational speaker, one half for the uh, Breaking the Machine podcast, and also has the uh, Ancestral Plane. He's the founder of that. Uh, we got the homie, man, Ahmad the Poet. How you doing, family? Oh, yeah, what's good, man? You all right? Yeah, man, everything is good. It's crazy you got that digital marketer. That's the name, man. A lot of people don't know man, that. Man, hey, hey, I got to do my research, and you yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's crazy. got to make sure I introduce you correctly, man. You got a lot of stuff going on, so we're going to touch on a little bit. Make sure I don't keep you too long and stuff, you know, just touch on you. My but, man. uh, I mean, how you doing, man? Everything smooth with you, up? Man, everything is good, man. Um... I, I feel like at this point in my life, man, uh, after I graduated college, it was just like I put all my focus into the podcast. So that's kind of where I've been at. So yeah. I guess I guess the ebbs and flows of my podcast is pretty much like the ebbs and flows of my life right now. Yeah, and yeah. I, you know, I said it on a previous episode when the podcast is doing good, I'm feeling great. I got energy. Mm-hmm. And when it's like, you know, not doing what I want to do, it's kind of like I'm going, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I'm for trying sure. to you know, yeah. get it right. But yeah, yeah. try to keep yourself up and keep it together. Yeah. Now, before we we're going to touch on all that with the podcast, but. We always start every podcast, every show with Salute Me While I'm Here. Mm. A lot of times we wait for people to pass away to write a long Facebook post about how we miss that person, how we love that person, how he or she was this or that, mm. instead of giving them those flowers and, you know, why you still can smell them and receive them. Mm. But it can't be nobody, you know, when you say a salute, you're going to think of mom, dad, brother, sister. It got to be somebody out of that immediate circle that's going to appreciate that and be surprised. So you got anybody in mind? That I would want to salute. Yeah, that's oh. outside of that mom, dad, brother, sister. Hmm. Hey, man, I salute my boy Spank, man, for, you know, riding with me with this podcast stuff, man, and just stand down, man, because we done been through a lot of ebbs and flows with this, too, man. Mm-hmm. Just, like, life issues come and go, man, and it can, like, stop you because a podcast is kind of like a creative thing, man. So, sure. But I don't know. It's different for me because it's, like... A lot of the dudes I grew up with, I don't even uh, talk to anymore. And then they ain't even on no, like, hating type stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. I know a lot of people are like, man, no, nah, you outgrow people. I don't think it's like that. Mm-hmm. It's just like when I went off to college, uh, a lot of my friends went off to CMU, like, yeah. Central Michigan. And I went off to U of M. Uh, I went off to U of M Dearborn. I ain't never say where I went to college. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but let's do it. You know, okay, I, I, ain't, I don't care anyway. But uh, yeah, I went yeah. to U of M Dearborn. So um, it was like a separation. And um, yeah. I didn't really keep up with people. People didn't really keep up with me. So mm-hmm. I don't know, man. It's just... um. I, I mean, I got a lot of OGs, man. Um, mm. uh, my one of my OGs passed away like last week. Um, oh, man, rest in peace, Cameron. Uh, shout out to shout out to OG, man. Um, but uh, yeah, man. Uh, I, it's really just my boy Spank for real, and um, mm. just you know a couple of dudes. I you know uh, my boy Greg, man. Just a couple of dudes who stayed down, yeah. man. But and that's, that's the crazy thing about it, man. You lose those connections, and it, sometimes it's not even intentionally. Mm, it's just nah, because nah. your grind might have separated y'all because they wasn't up to what you know to your level. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because I got homies that I grew up with that I love, and they my day ones. But it's like once you see how y'all life is setting up and how things is going, it's like damn, like. He not really doing anything like mm-hmm. how I am, and then when you try to kick it with them, it's feel like you kind of like falling back instead of you know what I'm saying going up or whatever ascending. It's just it's just about locking in, right? So let's say my man said he got a clothing business, and I say I'm doing podcasting, right? Mm-hmm. He called me at eight eight, 8 p.m. He called me at six p.m. He called me at any time of the day. I'm either editing a video, I'm researching another person sure. to get on the show, mm-hmm. I'm working on marketing. I just created a, a text me uh, community or whatever. I'm putting bread down for that. I swear to God, twenty four seven. It's <laughs> yeah, all about the sure. it's all about elevation. I call you like What you doing with your clothing business Nah bro I'm out at the club Bro I'm playing the video game I'm doing it Like that yep. irritates my yeah. energy Because I feel like Bosses When you in that circle of bosses Like we re-relax on the weekend Re-relax on this day But like mm-hmm. During the weekday It's like it's grind So if I'm calling you You're not grinding That irritates my spirit sure, no. Because it kind of makes me like Man I need to chill out And now you're taking away From my grind So it's like yep. I have to separate you So I can Duh. keep that energy You, you know? on point with that one Like you on point, dog, because I feel you because like I think they understand with me. Like I got the podcast, mm-hmm. coaching basketball, mm-hmm. got three kids, I'm married. So it's like I really don't have that much time to really like just fuck off. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because if I'm if I'm not doing anything productive or whatever as far as like my my, my the stuff that I, I love doing, I'm with my wife trying to make sure we spend that that quality time mm-hmm. together. Then you got I got three kids that's three different ages so I got 15 year old five and one mm. so it's like I gotta make sure I spend time with them you know mm. what I'm saying so it's like at the end of the day once you see your homies sometimes you gotta like like you said you gotta fall back cause you just don't want that energy in your way and they ain't doing shit especially if you got business and you doing you on the same grind, grind as me shit you should be moving just like me mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying I mean that's kinda how I feel like 
a lot of times people don't want to be pushed to that next level just because you're in the age range, man. Like, yeah. I, and, and that's kind of where I had to fall back, right? Because mm -hmm. if we all, you know, I'm 22, so if me and all my homies 22, mm -hmm. they they're not receptive to me telling, them, hey, bro, you gotta grind. Like, they're yeah. like, bro, what you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. that? it's like, bro, you you not even you not even in that mindset that we all can grind together yeah. because you not be you know willing to be held accountable. So if you can't be held accountable about nothing, you I can't be around you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, that's what's up, though. I I swear to God, like. Like you got like an old soul when I was looking. I, I would never mm. say you was twenty two just because your conversation, what you talk about on the podcast, and I've been following you for for a minute. So it's like, man, you it's like you must have really had some OGs in your life that really was teaching you a game, or like where that come from? Like just having that that old oh, soul that or it's that the, it's the nation talk. Yeah. Nation talk. Yeah. <laughs> it's that nation talk, man. Yeah. Long nights in the study group, man. Breaking down the science of a leaf. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We spending two, three hours on the science of a leaf. We spend it on the science of the woman and how yeah. to make, you know, science of business. I mean, they, it'll do it to you. Yeah, you know for what sure, I'm saying? For sure, for like sure. growing up, um, a, a, a lot of times. I feel like people don't really understand what that really entails to be in that kind of military type structure. Like mm -hmm. I, I tell my homeboys all the time, like you, you was growing up playing the game. I was growing up learning how to pray. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. I was on the block trying to, you know, with the final call trying to get it. So I don't know. Some people see it like, dang, that's kind of like ruining your childhood. You didn't have it, but it's just like yeah. it turned you into something to prepare you for life. No, for, for sure. For fast, so. fast. Man, my salute, man. I, like I said, it's episode 98. I've been saluting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to salute y'all podcast, man, because y'all some positive brothers. Um, y'all outlet that's not like just, you know, saying, putting out bullshit mm -hmm. just for likes and views. Mm -mm. Y'all really putting out some good shit and y'all having like the right guests on y'all show and y'all talking about some good stuff that people could really like learn from. You know what I'm saying? There ain't too many outlets that we can go to and actually learn something or be intrigued to even stay connected and keep watching. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we see something like, oh, hey, they talking. I'm going to go ahead and look at this shit where they talking about some old, you know, for lack of a better word, some love and hip hop type shit. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what they, they don't want to really see something that you can learn from. And like with my son, I'll be t telling him that stuff like about staying away from the wrong crowd mm -hmm. and like making sure you stay tunnel vision on what your goals is and don't mm -hmm. sit here and fall off because of a girl because of what your homie's doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I salute y'all for, you know what I'm saying, keeping that positive, you know what I'm saying, conversation and that, that positive outlet, you know what I'm saying, for people to check out. Man, absolutely, bro. And I, I think it's it's a part of, you know, our, our, our kind of like mission statement, bro. Like, I never like to have guests on there to start, you know, drama and nothing, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that or just try to get negativity out of nobody, man. I ain't never going to ask about nothing that, you know, in people's personal life that they don't want to touch on. That's why I salute you for just being like, hey, man, you know, what can we talk about? What can we not? Yeah. That's kind of the same thing I do. You know yeah, what I'm sure. saying? I never yeah. want to touch on anything. But, I mean... I just don't like to have those basic conversations. This is yeah. me and podcast talking about what women is doing and <laughs> yeah, how they doing sure. this to men and stuff. I mean, you got, I don't like to name drop, but you, everybody know them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those, those 10 to 15 podcasts. It's all, so I don't want to go on and have these same drawn out conversations. We all know what men doing wrong. We all know what women doing wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, it's, it's not, I'm not finna rehash the same argument that yeah. we all know about. Sure, so it's sure. just all about, you know, Having some actual elevating conversations. You yeah, know? hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Now it's, uh, it's 2021, man. It's the end of the year. You know what I'm saying? Last month of the year. We've been going through this virus for two years and stuff like that. Like, tell me how your year been, man. Like, have you had some ups and downs? Some things you wish you could fix? Some things that you still, mm. you know what I'm saying, want to improve on before the year is over with? Like, how have your year been, man? Man, my year has been a, it's, it's been a, it's been a journey, bro. Like, uh, when I started the podcast at the top of the year, mm. uh, one of my OGs reached out to me and he was just like, man, I see what you're doing with your movement, but you know, you got to do some more. You got to go farther. I'm like, well, you know, he was like, man, I can help you. So mm. he just was like, man, I'm gonna put you in, put you on game with this podcast stuff. He hooked me up with Jay, hooked me up with the studio and everything. And then mm. I've been running ever since. But, um, I think around, I, I was doing it for like three months solid mm. after we did that Royce episode, um, I don't know, something hit my spirit. I was trying I was talking to my homeboy the other day. I forgot what hit my spirit. I forgot what threw me off. But something just threw me off and I was just like, yeah. I can't do podcasting right now. No, that's what happened. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now that I think I'm like, what happened? Yeah, yeah. That's what hit you right there. Like, hey, some some <laughs> No, we some, some dudes had, you know, it was some crazy stuff going yeah. on in Detroit. I had to move back and some dudes had pulled up on some crazy stuff. Yeah. You talking about five charges pulled up. Like, I had yeah. to call my bro like, bro, it's getting wild out here, bro. I, yeah. my, I was still with my cousin at the time. I'm like, bro, what these dudes doing outside, man? And I was like, it's a, it was man. some shit, dog. I don't <laughs> I, and I had, like, it threw me all out of my element. So that's that's why I ended up, bro. <laughs> I had to take, like, two months off, bro, and get my mental straight, bro. For sure, for sure. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Now, um. What's this year like? What what's something you say you you learned about yourself this year that you didn't know? Like, what mm. you what you learn about yourself, man? Man, uh, I learned that 
like I have a, a issue with like self worth, man. Like a lot of people don't understand, like a lot of grinding and stuff. It really just comes from self worth, man. I heard Jason Wilson talk about this on the Breakfast Club. He was just talking mm. about like a lot of men we find our worth in our work, mm. and I never thought that I was that type of man yeah. until. Like I said, the fluctuations of my work, it, it, like it, it affects the way that I feel about myself. For and sure, I was like, sure. dang, I guess I'm that type of dude. So yeah. it's just like, I think that was the biggest thing, really understanding. Like, damn, I grind hard, mm. so hard. I've been grinding hard for years. It's just because I might not feel like I'm adequate. I feel like I gotta prove something yeah, to people, sure. bro. No, no, for sure. And like, man, we talk about that a lot, man. I talk about that with my wife and stuff. Like, you always, I think that's a good way of think. Like, you always gotta prove yourself, yeah. even if it's, even if it's like. Imaginary, like you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that's why I say the whole everybody thinks Shaw versus everybody is the playoff Detroit versus everybody, but it's like I always felt like since I was a young, it was like me against everybody. I never mm -hmm. really had no big team. When it comes to this podcast stuff, it's just me and him. When it comes to when I was doing music, it was just me. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I coached by myself, no assistant coach. Mm -hmm. So it's like I always want to prove I can I kinda wanna prove it alone. Like mm -hmm. I can do it alone. Like I even had offer cause I took this year off cause I wanted to focus on watching my son for his first year hoop. I'm like, I ain't gonna coach this year. I had offered for an assistant coach position. I'm like, no, I want to run this shit. Like, I'm good. I've been coaching for five years. And I ain't going to go back and be an assistant coach. Like, I'm good. I want to run this shit. You be my assistant. Mm. So it's like, it was like, that's why the whole versus thing, I, I, I kind of like made that up just to be like, just for that added motivation so I can mm. be like, I'm going against everybody. Yeah, man. I mean, shit, it, 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 it kind of weighed me down a little bit just because like, I feel like I have to have a certain type of, you know, level of success just to pop out. For like, sure. man, I ain't, I ain't popping out until I got this. I ain't <laughs> yeah, popping no. out until I got that. And then when you finally pop out or somebody see you out, it's like, man, what's up? And they give you all the love. And it's like, dang, man, mm -hmm. I didn't think I could get that love until I had this. Yeah. But like, like you said, it's like imaginary enemies, imaginary <laughs> yeah. standards of like, bro, I'm already where that I, I think I'm supposed to be. Like mm -hmm. people don't really, or people don't even care about that stuff to begin with. For sure. But it's what give me that drive. And people just see the drive. They just see the work and they just like, man, he just love to work. No, nah, not for real. It's something deeper in there. It's something <laughs> yeah, deeper in there for, for sure. real, bro. For sure. Now, before we get on everything, man, I'd like to know, know a little bit about the person growing up, man. So how was it growing up? Where you from? East, West, the Burbs. Uh, who was in the household, you know what I'm saying, all that good stuff. You kind of touched on it a little bit with mm -hmm. you being a, a Muslim and studying and stuff like that. Like, Yeah, uh, uh, nobody really believes me when I say I'm from Alabama. Okay. The whole time I was in school, I'd be, man, I'm from Alabama. Nobody ever believed that. <laughs> yeah. man, you ain't from Alabama. Man. <laughs> I was born and raised in Alabama. Well, I was born in Alabama. I wasn't raised in Alabama. I lived there until I was four, and then we moved to Flint. But all my other siblings, we, they was all born and raised in Flint. Okay. So uh, I'm from Flint, Michigan. Uh, I'm from Beecher. Um mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, man. So I guess just growing up, growing up in the nation, it was really just. Um, I grew up in a two parent household. My dad was there, man. I didn't, you know, had that story. He passed away when I was ten, so mm -hmm. I got the back end of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Your father not away when you're ten, so it's kind of like you got stereotypes that you're supposed to fall into. But um, yeah. I had a I had a really good household, man. Uh, a lot of morals, a lot of principles, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess I was raised up to you know the, to that that ideal way. You mm -hmm. know that 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 we we look on that TV and you know stuff, yeah. the white picket fence and all that stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah, sure. But you know When my father passed away It was like We got that Other side on the back end yeah, We, we yeah, saw yeah. the other side Of the eight ball You know what I'm saying yeah, Lose sure. the house Lose everything You know what I'm saying Really you have to get it All out the way out the mud mm. And when my father um, Passed away I, I really got to see Who I was You know mm. Because sometimes You really don't know Who you are as a man Until the, the man In the house is oh, gone yeah, For sure Because you got to adjust And then your chest Starts yeah, to stick out So yeah. you know my, my chest was sticked out For you know A whole uh, You know a, lot, a long time And then you know <laughs> yeah. I saw how my brothers Was rocking They were sticking <laughs> their chest out <laughs> And I was like Shit you know, we didn't know we was really men till he passed. We became our own men, and yeah. then it took a, took me on like a whole different spiritual journey. Journey, of, you know, discovering who I was. You know mm. what I'm saying in terms of just you know asserting myself. Mm. But um, I guess I my equilibrium kind of came back. I came back to my peaceful self around like my freshman year of college you okay. know what i'm saying high school was a little different i used to get in all type of trouble and stuff yeah. and then my brother used to come to me and tell me like bro them teachers already heard about you in high school you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah, yeah. they're like bro they are right. they waiting on you bro yeah, they, they sure. telling me like yeah your brother doing this and we yeah, wait so on you already know what's up yeah, you know what yeah. i'm saying so i was just like bro i gotta get it right because my name is circulating in the wrong way and my name is like my value you man know what I'm saying? we talk about that a lot man your name is everything man all the name all the man has is his name and his word you For know sure. what i'm saying and if he don't keep his word then his name ain't worth shit so Hell it's kind of no. <laughs> like I, I just tried to keep my name clear you know what i'm saying so when i got into high school i tried to re you know reinvent myself you know mm. going through those trials and tribulations but when i kind of got to my freshman year of college and i removed myself uh, you know all the dudes that i was you know growing up around and all that stuff it really kind of got me to understand like bro i can do anything you know what i'm saying i'm in an internship with 
10 white people and I'm the only white I'm the only black dude and it's just like bro I can still operate yeah, I can still sure. move and shake and I don't got a cold switch for nothing you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying yeah. my yeah. internship was up at the Little Caesars Arena the first uh, I think it was the first year that it was uh, built mm. the first year that uh, they had that team we was up there um, I was up there it was like uh, we were selling like uh, credit cards for um, Flagstar okay. like policies and stuff man and I was getting it off yeah. because it was the culture you know what I'm saying yeah, it was yeah, the culture sure. that I come from it's like everybody up there how you doing guy and we doing <laughs> I'm like hey what up boss man hey what up buddy? Sure. Hey, yeah, let's do it. You, know, you know I sell could, yeah. you know what I'm saying they couldn't do it like I did it so <laughs> then my culture kind of put me on that top level you yeah. know before my culture keep me down here you know what I'm saying I got yeah. a cold switch but now I'm in an environment where my culture can take me to For that sure. next level For so sure. I had to embrace it but Growing up, growing up was uh, was really smooth, man. I ended up, I played sports in high school, man. I broke my leg my senior year, so I didn't, you know, I I definitely didn't have no college aspirations. I wasn't as good as my older brother. He ended up playing college ball, but okay. um, you know, I, I, that was a dream of mine. I grew up uh, wanting to rap. That's where the name of my the poet came from. But okay. I kind of got that from the women. It's the, I used to rap, and then yeah. you know, it's kind of age where like the rapper kind of be like, yeah. you a rapper, nigga? Like you yeah, in high school, yeah. and you ain't, you know, ain't got no buzz. Yeah, but then yeah. I started telling girls like, you know, I write poetry. Oh, God, you write poetry. And I'm like, okay, I'm a mod the poet now. Yeah, I swear to God, that's where it came from. Nobody know that. I was like, I'm a mod the poet now. You know what I'm saying? No, no woman, and it's always a woman in everything, bro. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes. Man. <laughs> right. Yes. Good or bad, man. They're going to have some influence on yes. you for sure. Yes. That's a fact, man. Now, as far as your dad, man, like passing away, because my dad passed away when I was 13. Mm. So I know how it is, you know, me, my brother, my mom. You think, like, do you ever think how things would be different if he was still around? Do you ever have those, you know what I'm saying? Those moments that you'd be like, damn, like, with me, I'd be always thinking about how me and his relationship would be because at the time I'm, I'm 13, but him and my mm. mom split when she was when he, I was 11. Mm. So it's like I know him, but I wanted to, I always think like how would it be as a grown man had a relationship with my father. You know what? Um, I tell people, uh, well, I tell my homeboys all the time because you know growing up they always complain about their dads or if they didn't have it, then I'm just like, man, listen. Um, I feel like. Oftentimes, a lot of us men don't really understand the weight that your father carries until he's no longer present. Mm. I mean, because even if he's not in your life, just if, if he cross if he cross the state, you know what I'm saying, or if he across the country, yeah, yeah. you still feel his presence. Like he can protect you, like he can handle stuff. You know what I'm saying? I know mm. girls who got their father in their life. If they car break down, they gonna call daddy, yeah, even sure. if he yeah. in Houston. Like daddy, can you? <laughs> yeah, can you help when, me, when, yeah. when your father passes away, there ain't none of that. It, mm. it's, and especially when you a man, ain't no, ain't nothing above you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Your father, sure. me, obviously, you got God above you but in terms of this physical form like man you just look like dang my dad he he can be out there help me you know what I'm saying yeah. I don't care if it's 20 niggas outside yeah, strapped sure. up he like coming, yeah. if my dad in the crib <laughs> with me or if, if my dad down the street I, I feel safe like yeah, man he no, can handle he this yeah. you know what I'm saying that was just the type of man my father was so when he passed yeah. away it was like it put a weight on me like I gotta protect my whole family and yeah. I got brothers but it's like we gotta protect the whole family sure, like sure. if something go down like dad ain't right like dad can't handle this right now it's, it's us you know yeah, what I'm saying but if, if, if my dad was here I, I feel like uh, I wouldn't be as um I don't know. I, I know a lot of. I, I know this ain't everybody, but I know a lot of uh, brothers who got their fathers in their life, and they not as aggressive. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's yeah, yeah. masculine way. I don't want to say it takes away from your masculinity, but it's, but it's like it's certain levels you don't have to go to if your for father's sure. present. Yeah, for sure, for you sure. You know what I'm saying? But when he's absent, it's like another level you have to go yeah, to because, because you now you get the it. Top you got your dog. mom. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So you, you gotta be that. Dog. You gotta be that. Yeah, you gotta be that person, man. So for real. you know, I, I think I probably will be less. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like you know, dad gonna take care of this. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to. My car break down. I don't have to like my dad to figure it out. Yeah. I'm broke now My dad like I ain't got nobody To help me bro Like I'm So that comes with A level of aggression And yeah. a level of energy Like bro I take care of myself bro Can't nobody tell me shit You know yeah, yeah. But it's just a part It's, it's just it's coming upon us to be humble enough to even take that criticism from the OGs, from the homies, yep. even though you're taking care and nobody helping you and nobody helping you out and feeding you. Like, mm -hmm. it just take a different type of energy to still take care of yourself like your father would, but still be able to look up the father figures. Yeah, even for though sure. you, your own father's figure. Right. I, man, I have these conversations with my oldest son all the time because he, he, he able to understand now. Mm -hmm. I always tell him, like, you know, if anything happened to me, God forbid, you got to know how to take care of things. You got siblings that you got to take care of. You got your mom you got to take care of. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be able to handle things and, and listen and understand understand everything i'm saying is not to be fussing at you or to be hard on you is is to get you to understand if i'm not around you get you you won't fold under pressure mm -hmm. you'll be able to handle any situation that come at you get back damn my dad told me this like he told me i was going to be faced with this or this that, and the third so i'm hoping that i gave him enough game so that he understands soaking in so if he ever be faced with that even if i'm even even if i am around if he by himself, he know how to get through things because of the conversations we had. Man, I was riding around it, well, a couple years ago, back back when I was a freshman in college, man. My car overheated. 
Boom. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? The engine over here, smoke coming out the engine and stuff. And I remember when we was out in Chicago, man, because uh, we lived out in Chicago for like two years, man. And that's when I feel like I really became a man. Because it was, it was that period of being in that perfect, you know, household, yeah. the American dream. And then going on in, in, into some real boys in the hood type yeah, shit. Yeah, sure, you know, uh, sure. so we lived off of Bennett <laughs> Avenue off of Stony Island in Chicago, man. And it was completely different. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It was like from Lever to Beaver to some straight hood <laughs> shit. I was like, whoa, what the? Yeah, yeah. Niggas talking about run your shit, nigga. I'm like, oh, shit. So it's really on some like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? A different world type stuff on no, the back end sure. so <laughs> when I was looking at it you know my, my dad he was cruising around town and the engine had overheated and I remember him putting water in it you yeah. know what I'm saying and I was like damn so fast forward years later he passed away and I remember my o engine overheated so I put some water yeah, in it sure. had he never showed me that I'd have panicked like yeah. oh shit my engine overheated yeah. up. but it's those little things that your father do and he Duh. maintained his composure all the time yeah. and it lets you maintain your composure like okay I've seen this before let me learn how to handle this you know yeah, what I'm saying for sure. it's like bro the lesson that your father tells you or the lesson that your father the demonstrates yeah. it'll stick with you for life man. oh no fast fast man hell yeah man now you know you say you have basketball dreams man mm -hmm. uh did you ever like you of course was the nba ever like something you was like damn i want to be in the league like as a oh, hell yeah man <laughs> hell yeah but I, I was realistic with it I, I mean i was like man i, I might not go to the league i just want to play college ball i'm just, yeah. I'm just a dog you know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure. When, I, when i play basketball and when i play basketball now i'm just a dog you yeah, know what yeah. i'm saying like my brother could tell you we'd be up at the gym we we'd be hooping with the best hoopers up at the y man and all the dudes in the city because you know flint's like a small city so you know the kyle kuzma the monte yeah, yeah. monte L Matter of fact, you said Flint Bleacher. He, uh, Monte is the one who eliminated my uh, brother before he went to the States. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Monte and Morris. Man as hell, like, God damn these. Uh, my, Miles Bridges, all them boys, yeah, they, yeah. they all used to, we all used to hoop at the Y, you know, up at the YMCA, man. All the best hoopers up there, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, uh, bro, I'll be out there playing defense. That's what I did. When I was playing in high school, I, I always looked at myself as like a Draymond type player. I was yeah, just a dog, sure. man. Yeah. I just love it. Bro, and I'd be getting embarrassed. Bro, I'd be getting but the shit embarrassed out there, bro. <laughs> Need to cross me up, 360 windmilling. But I was a dog, yeah, bro. For sure. and, yeah. and, and I never let it fade me. Yeah, like dudes would be recording. Oh my God, look at this. But I was a dog, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't care about none of that. No, I would make sure. you do it again. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. No, for sure. And dogs sure. just, when I come into them, they know, like, man, I don't care about none of that, man. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I don't care about embarrassment. I don't care yeah. about, I'm just a dog. Yeah, bro. and me as a care. coach, that's why I be telling my kids, I don't give a damn about none of that shit. Like, get back on D, get back. If you get killed, Hey, get back on D. Get that shit back. Like, don't be worried about... Niggas be worried about what the crowd gonna think. Fuck that. Get back on defense and, they and get it back. And they respect you afterwards. Cause them dogs, yeah. they respect me after. Cause it's like, bro, I'm really in the fight about this. It's just yeah. that dominance in you, bro. It's just like, bro, I don't care about none of that, bro. Yeah. I don't care about the flashy highlights, bro. I, I couldn't dunk till my till I was in eleventh grade. So I didn't know nothing about dunking, but I knew yeah. about hard work and defense, bro. Yeah, That's all sure. I did. Now, man, before we uh we get to some things, man, stay on basketball, man. I was a little disappointed, man, when you had said that. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> You know, you said I'm LeBron. Black for it now. Yeah. We, we gonna do, we, stand on we, that. We gonna bro. get off that. Now, the only thing I gotta say about that situation, I'm a Kobe is my favorite player. Mm -hmm. Mike to me, Mike is is the greatest. Mm -hmm. I feel like with the two, it's kind of like it's kind of like comparing Tupac to Biggie. Yeah. You can't do it because they're both two different type of players. But I will say this: um, you being a LeBron fan, me being a Kobe fan, I, I I feel like they both brought their teams up in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kobe was more ball dominant. In your face, get this shit together type player. And LeBron was more of a team player. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 pat you on the shoulder, it's going to be all right. I feel like, do you feel like LeBron ever had a youngin that he brought up and made good? Because that's the thing. Kobe, you say what you want, but I feel like Kobe brought the dog out of Marcus Gasol. I mean, he came mm -hmm. up Gasol, my bad. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he, 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 he was great under Kobe. I feel like Andrew Bynum was great under Kobe. I feel like Lamar Odom had his best years once he mm -hmm. got to Kobe. I feel like LeBron, sometimes he take away from certain players because he got had a ball in his hands and he need more of a spot up shoes around him. Mm. Well, I feel like Della Dover, he brought the dog out of him. Yeah. And yeah. he kept him in the league. <laughs> He, he kept him in the for sure. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know what team he played, but I, I know he kept, and I know he brought the dog out of mm -hmm. him. I feel like he brought the dog out of Mario Chalmers, too. You saw him cussing him out on the sidelines. No, true, true, true. He, he, he brought the dog out of him. Um, I, I don't know if I was saying, yeah, Chris Bosh was already a dog. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like he kind of took a you know, I think he took back. a step back when yeah, he, he took a step more back. of a, a beastful player yeah. with Toronto. I mean, a lot. I mean, and it's hard, you know what I'm saying, because a lot of the superstars that came play with him, like K Love and and, and, and uh, um, Chris Bosh, they had to take a you know step yeah, back. Yeah, so yeah. it's like he didn't bring the dog out of him, but he turned him into champions. Yeah, no facts. But then I look at somebody like what's that could be himself with LeBron, Lonzo Ball, 
Mm-hmm. Because he was a more of a I he I need the ball in my hand type of player. Like I can't play off you because his jump shot getting better now with the Bulls than it was with the Lakers. But I feel like he needed the ball more. And with LeBron, Le, LeBron a point guard. He don't want to call himself a point guard. He a point guard. So he got the ball. So long as the ball just spot up in the corner and making his game look like he trash, but he really better than that. But he need the ball in his hand to make you shit know, happen. W- what I hear is I hear people talking about what's good for me. What was gonna get the chip, man? And I feel like that's his mindset. Mm-hmm. And LeBron and and a and, and, uh, 21, 22 year old player, they are yeah. gonna have two different mindsets. It's like, bro, yeah. I'm trying to hone my skill. I'm trying to get my shot together. I'm trying to do. It. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. like, bro, I've done everything I have <laughs> yeah, to do, sure. bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. I'm trying to get a chip. Yeah, yeah, Can yeah. you sit in that corner and shoot that three? Like when I no, nah, man, I'm trying to do this. I I got the Nike deal on the line. I got yeah. like, bro, I don't care about none of that. And it's hard to be with somebody who just like. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I done seen it all mm-hmm. the time. Like, when you working for, like, big companies and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you a superstar. You got this vision. Like, Kanye talking about how, you know, Virgil rest in peace and all these yeah. other people. Like, when you in this conglomerate, they like, bro, I just need you to do this. But yeah, you got so sure. much creativity. It's like, bro, this is the goal. Yeah, yeah, This is the goal to win this fast, chip. Fast, fast, After fast. we win this chip, then you can look flashy. Then I can teach you how to get 20 a night. Then I can teach you how to do that finger roll. But right now, I just need you in that corner. Can you sit in that corner? And a lot of dudes mm. can't do that. They can't be, you know, be humble enough and, and, and really just submit to that role to get Get, get that chip, you know. He, what I'm he saying? made me change my whole little chip. Was, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but um, I, I'm gonna say something I never say on camera, man. But I say it like it, it, with with myself and like my son. Kobe, my favorite player, but LeBron is number two. Mm. I can't put him past Mike. I just can't do it. I can't. You know, you them old dudes who just can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's about that feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about that. But feeling. I will say. LeBron, I gotta put him at number two just because of what he what he have done on and off the court. Like mm-hmm. Kobe, with well, Kobe still gonna be my favorite player ever. Mm-hmm. The only person I ever cried about passing away I didn't know was Kobe Bryant. Mm-hmm. Like this shit hurt me. Right after the podcast, we found out, and I'm telling you, for a whole week or two, I was down. Like mm. bad, like I was no, mad because my son caught me crying. Like I'm like, boy, get in the room. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because Kobe was like the person. What when Kobe got in the league, I was what. Fifth grade, mm. I got mad at my mom for giving me a Shaq jersey instead of a Kobe. Mm. Like, come on, mom, come on, man. Like, how you gonna give me a Shaq jersey? You got, you got Kobe nah, right there. Kobe, the truth, man. Kobe yeah, the for truth. sure, man. Rest in peace, Kobe, man. But I feel like a lot of that was just the energy, man. Like, yeah. a lot of people, they don't. I don't know if I don't want to say they can't relate to LeBron energy, but everybody want that type of dog killer mentality, man. People look up to that. You know what I'm saying? And I really think a lot of that is accessibility. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. When Will Smith got on social media, I mean, people stopped looking at him with that same mystique that they looked at him before, like, that they look at a Denzel yeah, way. If yeah, Denzel sure. get on social media, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I guarantee y'all ain't going to be looking at Denzel <laughs> yeah, the way we be looking yeah, at yeah. If he on there with, with the tripod, <laughs> like, hey, what up? And like, the fact that LeBron is in the, the social media yeah. era, that he's accessible, that he's the nice dude, and he not looking at, you know, shitting on dudes, like... Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, if if MJ had social media, bro, it wouldn't. It, oh no, it man, would, come on. He dog. would still be, but it wouldn't. No, like people wouldn't he, love him man, the way they love him. Social bro. media, if they had, if they had the way sports talk radio is now, like mm-hmm. the things that he probably was doing and the things that you can just think of that he was doing, mm-hmm. like that should have been all over the place. Like so, yeah, a lot of those older players are saved that they didn't have to go through the stuff that you know players are going through now mm. because it's twenty four hours, three sixty five. Shoot, the camera's right there on you. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Even when you try to avoid it, it's right there. So mm-hmm. it's nothing you could do about that, but yeah, you're right about that. Mike, Mike probably would be a whole different type. Of <laughs> it's funny. I was a sports journalist for two years before I did this stuff, so this is kind of like my element. Oh shoot, man! I'm, yeah. hey, man, I love, I love it, dog. But like I said, when you got somebody like like LeBron, people I hate him so much that they like just don't even pay attention to his mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. It's like Jay Z, dog. Like you can say what you want, but he's a good rapper. You ain't gotta like him, but you gotta respect him. You got to. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. And LeBron, I, re- I respect him. And he on my team. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So, I love that shit. Yeah. You know what He brought my team a shit. But, like, with, with, who you think going to be that next person to, to get that, that 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 king, for lack of a better word, of the league? Like, because you can't really say Steph Curry and stuff because they getting into that older age. I'm talking mm-hmm. about from this, this young crop of uh, players. Like, with me, I look at somebody like, like John Morant. Mm-hmm. I love John Morant game because he just, just, he don't give a damn. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I love Jason Tatum, too. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Um, when you said it, I'm like, man, who, who is it? Who is it? And and you just said it, Jason Tatum. Yeah, it'd probably Jason Tatum. Now that I think about it, it'd mm-hmm. probably be Jason Tatum, just cause he got that old school game. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The way he takes it, the way it's slow. He he. I don't want to say he remind me of Carmelo, but just the way Carmelo got the, the footwork, man. Carmelo, yeah. it's like, bro, I feel like don't know, can't nobody rush him. No, can't no, nobody no, rush him. He, he shoot the same speed every time. He got three dudes on him. He shoot the same speed every time. It's like, can't nobody rush his game. And I feel like Jason Tatum that way. Like, can't nobody yeah. rush him. He just do the same and, speed, uh, man. Real talk, uh, Melo, he did get, uh, they, they, they messed him up. He posted one rookie a year a year. 
mm. over Brian. Only thing Brian had led over him was I think assists. That was it. Like, and he took his team to a playoffs, and they both both teams was out of the playoff the year before they got there. So mm. yeah, y'all you got play mellow, man. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like it's a lot of careers that's like a big what if, man. Yeah, yeah for sure. D Rose was like always oh, the biggest man, one to me, man. man. D Rose, was come on, Mello, D Rose one. and Mellow, those my guys, man. Mm-hmm. That, that was my guys. Now, um. Man, before we get to the podcast, I always ask this question. Give me an album or a song that take you back to a time in your life that you could just remember perfectly. Mm, probably uh, Miseducation by Lauryn Hill. Oh, damn. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. My mom used to listen to that every day, man. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, it's the truth. That's why when people ask me, like, man, who's the best female MC of all time? I'll be like, Lauryn Hill, man. Yeah. yeah and I sure. don't, you know, I, I can't speak on, I, I, I just speak on vibes, man. Yeah, 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 and just yeah, like, yeah. yeah, like she was, she was the coldest, man. I can't, yeah. you know, I got to give it up. Now you you say you know, your mom playing that. What's some other artists that you was messing with just off your parents or uh, like people around you, older brothers? Indie Ire, Fantasia. You mm. know, uh, my dad used to listen to Nas. Mm. Um, I think Nas did a collab album with a collab album with uh, one of Bob Dylan's yep, yep. sons or something Bob like Marley. that. Bob Marley. Bob yeah, Marley. Yeah, yeah. So I remember he used to play that yeah, all yeah. the time. And um, yeah, man, I, I I didn't really grow up listening to hip hop. I grew up listening to classical music for real, for real. Okay. But um. Yeah, I mean, I listen to Nas. My mom used to listen to all type of R and B and stuff like that. For sure, for sure. Now, uh, 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 what's something you want to do growing up that you never told nobody? Like one, you say you you've been playing the piano. Mm-hmm. That's something that as a kid, it's two things I wanted to do. That I never told nobody: play a piano or tap dance. Mm. <laughs> nobody never knew about my tap dance. Like I took every show. I was in the kitchen with my little church shoes, mm. tapping like trying to. Well, trying to. I saw Gregory Hines, and I'm like, damn, I want to be him. You know what I'm saying? So what was something that people don't know that you, as a kid, like, damn, I want to do that, but you just never did? Hmm. Um, I, yeah, probably play the piano. Mm. Shoot, I used to want to be a singer, man. I used to want to be an actor for a long time, bro. Like, I used to dream about, like, waking up one day and, like, seeing myself on, like, a movie. And I didn't even want to be, like, a huge actor. I just wanted to be able to, like, in a huge movie and just be able to watch it every now and again. Like, that's me in the background. <laughs> I, go, just tell them, I swear to God, that's all. I just wanted one. I didn't want nothing, like, to be a huge super, superstar. I just wanted to be, like, you know, like, one of the, you know, like, chefs in a movie in the yeah, background. Yeah, taking somebody's order, like, that's me. Like, that's all. <laughs> I need it But um, I don't know bro Doing a podcast And then seeing people Like put me up on their TV And tag me up When I'm on the TV Yeah we like, yeah. Dang, I mean sure you're 22 stuff. You can get back into it Yeah you I mean Yeah It's <laughs> not really for me man I'm just saying I don't even want to speak on, I was just about to go Way left They be having these Actors do all type of stuff You know what I'm saying yeah. Outside of their character And oh, I'm not really man. with that You know what I'm saying I, yeah. You know what I'm saying We need you to do it Nah I can't do that man. We're gonna man. have you on skid row Oh I can't do it. So I'm just like I'm straight, Man I just you know had a saying? young lady On the show Um Last Friday, and she was saying, I was saying, like, is it is it a role that you wouldn't take? Mm. Now, you know what I'm saying? Because we was talking about that on his podcast about, like, a lot of times the, uh, sell, when people sell out, because they can say something they want to do from the beginning, but then when they get that, that dollar sign, they're like, all right, mm. man, I'll do it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? She was saying, basically, like, as a new actress, she wouldn't show her body off. She mm. wouldn't do, like, any naked scenes or whatever. But she said that may change once, you know what I'm saying, she mm-hmm. get up there. But as a new actress, she said she wouldn't do that. Well, what it's really about is accessibility. Mm-hmm. A lot of people say what they won't do right now because they still feel like they're accessible to the hood. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you in a $10 million loft on, uh, <laughs> on, you know, in New York, and yeah. yeah, you might do a topless scene because you like, hey, yeah. man, they, they can't touch me. I got all this money. It's that separation. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that rawness of being close to the people mm-hmm. is you, you being authentic. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, when you're on that high level, you're on the, you know, the, the penthouse floor, it's like, uh, is it you? are you really thinking clearly? Because you're on the penthouse floor. You really yeah. can't see people. Yeah, or sure. maybe you're thinking that you're most clearly because people can't see you think I don't know yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm speaking to my personal self like bro nah I can't nah I, I just pray that the money will never phase me man I just stay that sure. I pray that I stay authentic to oh, yeah. you know oh yeah for sure now man the podcast man breaking the machine man mm-hmm. first where did uh, um, how did y'all come up with the name and what made you uh, pick uh, Spanger as your, your co-host oh uh, man um, I don't know man uh, I was just like when I put when my ideas, like, it was around November, it was like, okay, we about to put a podcast together. I got to come up with everything for it. I got to come up with, the like, mm-hmm. the the um like the overview for it. So, like, what we going to be talking about? What we not going to be talking about? What's the premise for it? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? What's the name for it? And um I was just thinking about um one of the albums Joe Button had put out called Rage in the Machine. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wanted it to be, like, The Matrix, right? I wanted it to be, like, Breaking Out the Matrix, right? Mm-hmm. That was the first thing that came to my mind, Breaking Out the Matrix. But uh, I'm a very conscious brother, you know, um... 
you know, for, for a lot, because that's what a lot of people follow me for online, oh, yeah, you know, for, sure. for consciousness, right? Yeah. But uh, I didn't want it to be overly conscious. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm talking about, you know, the science of, you know, sun gazing and eating the sun and all type of other stuff. Yeah. I don't even get into that stuff. I just hear about a whole bunch of crazy. I'm not that level of conscious. Yeah, I'm just sure. conscious where it's just like, yeah. hey, we need a black bank right here. That's yeah, the level of sure, conscious I'm sure, on. Sure. I'm not on really tantra and all that other stuff. Like, whoa, okay. <laughs> like, you know, I'm in the crystals and all this, but it's, it's levels to this stuff. Yeah, but yeah, sure. I was like, I need Spank to kind of ground us. You know yeah, what I'm saying? And yeah, he kind of a, a conscious brother you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. but he kind of got the other side to yeah. him but he conscious too so I was like bro me and you we, we gonna be able to create that equilibrium where it's not too much of conscious stuff and it's not too much of that crazy for sure, stuff for sure. Perfect and you know there's certain guests that come on it's just like I'm not really adamant in that field that he might be adamant in like I said I ain't grow up listening to hip hop so I'm not a hip hop aficionado mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying I listen to classical music if we had a classical guest on I, that's my lane you yeah, know what I'm saying yeah. so it's just like that yin and yang but I feel like um, breaking the machine it was like rage in the machine Mm-hmm. And then uh, the name was Break in the Machine. So, mm-hmm. like, everybody gets they break in the machine. Like, the machine sure. is revolving, and you get that one break where you can get out, you get that one chance. Mm-hmm. And um, that was kind of the premise for it. Like, this is your break in the machine. This for is sure. how you get out and get to that other level. But I felt like people wouldn't be able to pronounce it right. Like, because yeah. I felt like they were just grouping yeah. in, like, breaking the yeah, machine. Like, no, it's break <laughs> in the machine. Like, it's yeah. a pause in the machine. Sure. So I was just like, forget that. Let me just call it breaking the machine. Okay. And um, it was just kind of like the premise was just like breaking out the Matrix, man. But the Matrix is not, you know, the Matrix is the white right power structure and all that but it's really just about breaking out of those different social constructs that you have in yourself or what you're supposed to be like For man sure. just be free man just yeah. you know what i'm saying i know dude chasing the bag man don't 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 let that bag chase you man like don't let that bag get to you man yeah, yeah, chasing sure. it man For sure, For sure. you know and a lot of times we do this stuff with that with that on our mind mm-hmm. and take away from like just a good conversation mm-hmm. like when when money started coming in to play it take the fun out like when people was coming up playing basketball it wasn't about money it was about having fun winning mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying with rap and stuff like that and I think when money come in in, in in the fold that's when shit started like just dying down yeah man you know what I'm saying like it don't be you, you're not as good of a hooper now because it's all about the money you're not having fun with, with the game because it's all about the money. You're not having fun with the podcast because it's about the money. It's just all about money and what you can do to make money instead of what can you do to make this a good show and have fun while you're doing it. It's about legacy, man. And that's what I tell people all the time, man. Like, bro, uh, I, I've been blessed. I don't, you know, I, I ain't had a guest charge me to come on the show. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And I think that's what it's about. Like, I can't even have an authentic conversation. If I'm about to say, can you, know you do saying? that? Like, you I can't, you know what I'm like, saying? Like, I, <laughs> bro, I, I can't do that. And I, I, I've had... You know, uh, that's a different story, man. Yeah, I, I had, sure. you know, one individual, you know what I'm saying, asked about that, and I'm like, bro, if I had Royce the Five Nine on my show, man, and he did it off the love and the yeah, strength, why would I, bro, I'm not having you bro. on the show, bro. Like, I, and, this, and this dude, I ain't even reached out to him, bro. Yeah. My man's reached out to him, so I'm like, bro, I don't even know who you are, yeah, bro. For so, sure. like, you know, but uh, that's a different story, man. But it's just like. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like when when money get involved, it can kind of stop the love of it, the art of it, man. And I never want to lose that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I never want to like you know we was talking about that on the last episode. Like, man, we the underdogs. That's why the people love us yeah, because I, we no, underdogs. That was a man. dope, dope, said, dope episode you know, too. I, I don't want to lose that mentality of being an underdog, bro. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to let the money change us, man. So it's mm-hmm. just about staying authentic. When my followers hit me up, bro, like I said, I got this text me funnel right. I just created this text me funnel, so my uh you know I got the uh, number on my pages, so the fans texting me to get in this like whole text funnel, mm-hmm. and they send me messages all the time like man i love man love from north carolina love from houston love from here and i respond to them hey man uh, get on ig man we can do an ig live call i have to be accessible you know for what sure, i'm saying sure. so they can feed you know i don't ever want to be dissing like this is that bro i gotta i i gotta get my time especially yeah. like i don't got a response i don't have yeah, children yeah, yeah, i don't have a wife i don't have a, i can do that you know yeah, what for I'm saying? Sure. So, yeah yeah that's my now, thing and how do you prep for an interview man like with me i know i you know i try to go on facebook if you're not like somebody that's overly famous and stuff i try to look at old pictures old statuses go on instagram i try to do a lot that i can do so i can actually know about the guests i feel like with a lot of podcasts they might bring somebody on the show because they got a name but they really ain't doing their homework on the guests mm. they really not seeing what's, what's the guests about you know what I'm saying so how do you prep for an interview with, with, with a guest whenever they come on the show okay well when I first started my podcast uh, my OG said hey, you ever heard of Combat Jack yeah, I yeah, said no sure. I ain't never heard of Combat Jack um, he said well you need to check out his podcast and check out some other people's podcast to kind of get your flow and your feel for what podcasting and what interviewing is so I checked out Combat Jack and I checked out Joe Button mm-hmm. and um, I checked out Joe Rogan and mm-hmm. um, I just try to look at they style of what they do and put my flavor on it but um I, I, I was talking to my producer the other day he was like man yeah, you should write down notes because I be forgetting some questions to say mm-hmm. but my whole thing is when I interview I don't like to have notes per se even though a lot of people I interview I, like when I went on Earn Your Leisure uh, bro had notes uh, shout out to David um, over at the Inner Wealth Podcast sure. and Earn Your Leisure but um 
I kind of like to just go off the brain, even though all the notes is in my phone. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. But it's like I'm, I be forgetting, and he like, bro, just had like the laptop. Charlamagne got the laptop, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, you right, bro, because I be forgetting a lot of questions. But my style is just to kind of go off, you know, uh, questions that I memorize mm -hmm. and just go in and um. Just with the ancestral plane, bro. I didn't watch three hour lectures. I didn't watch three hour interviews. That's my job. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I might watch nine hours of interviews in one day because just to get out the 30 second clip, that's what I, you know, that's what that's the grind. That's what well, I do. Sure, sure. So if I got a guest on, I'll watch all the interviews they ever did. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I don't try to look for the question that everybody asks. I look for that small moment, right? So he talk about, he played the piano just like you talk about me playing the piano. Mm -hmm. sm small. 30 second yeah, thing yeah, and be yeah. talking about me playing the piano and then you kind of get that's what I pick up on I don't pick on when he talking about man we did this music video out in Houston we were like <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay yeah he kind of already responding on that but then he also said that um he used to do Yu-Gi-Oh when he was a kid let me yeah. talk about that yeah, 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 then yeah, let me yeah, compile yeah. those moments of those little things that he don't really want to touch little, on yeah. or he feel like the interview that he on right now they don't want to touch on that I'm going to touch on that because sure. that's breaking the machine that's For authenticity sure. and that's going to really show the people in the hood the young niggas in the hood like yeah bro it's cool to play Yu-Gi-Oh like bro talk about that man talk about meditation talk about this because I heard you talk about this like yeah. I go on a Instagram feed and scroll down and look for something just minute that's what I try to do like For sure, for sure. And I feel like, I'm the yeah. same way same way yeah, for sure, for sure. And I feel like Courtney was like the perfect guest for that, man. Like, I ain't had to go real far. Shout out yeah. to Courtney Bell. But like, when he went on, we dropped it. And that was like one of our biggest episodes because it was just like authenticity, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That was definitely a dope episode, man. Now, when it comes to podcasts, when it comes to music, when it comes to whatever, dog, it's like a, it's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, oh, yeah. Who's the popular person? Like, I feel like a lot of times, um, smaller podcasters or smaller rappers or whatever I think the first thing people look at is alright how many followers they got mm -hmm. alright they ain't worth it you know what I'm saying even though that could be a dope person or a dope platform to go on you won't even pay no attention to it because of that mm -hmm. Why, do you think like that that the number games mess up a lot of things in the hip hop and podcast just in life in general like we feel like the numbers is gonna validate us if we don't have enough numbers we not like on the, on the same level as like my podcast and your podcast I ain't got a thousand you got fifteen thousand it's like all right I'm not to his level but I could be a dope person but you just won't pay me you'll knock me all out the way just because I'm not up to par well I'm gonna tell you this man I didn't seen a lot of podcasts right mm -hmm. it's all an industry game right we in the D man we getting a lot the mud right yeah you you look out in LA you look out in Atlanta you look out in New York it's a huge podcast scene right you got these companies they putting on other they putting on a home girl who got a podcast <laughs> in her basement or putting on a home girl who doing a hairdresser and stuff and I'm listening and the conversation we just talked about how we prep for interviews a lot of them don't do that mm -hmm. I'm like dang how you get this deal with <laughs> this company yeah. and you not even doing your homework you not even taking it serious but you getting that big bag yeah, and we sure. out here really just trying to get it out the mud yeah. and we really being real thorough real surgical with this stuff yeah, yeah, for sure. and we not getting the bag we not getting so it's just like what is this about so I oftentimes what I think is uh, some of the people who had the platforms, they're not having the right conversation. They're not having the best conversation. They're asking, I don't want to say stupid questions, but questions is like, man, they've been asked that a million times. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, you yeah. get into the bag. But how I view it is when I'm at the barbershop, how I view it is when I'm on a car ride, how I view it is when I'm in the hood talking to the homies, we have some of the best conversations. Oh, for sure. And we Hell get yeah. no views. <laughs> and you, you, you get that OG, he come in the cut, and he kind of light it up, and it's just like, whoa. Yeah. What if OG was kind of being on some other stuff? What if he didn't get that game? It's just like, bro, if you come in this room, it, it don't matter how many views we get. This is the conversation that can impact yeah. the world because only – us in this room can have that conversation that no, light it up. Sure, if if sure. it was somebody else in the room, I might not be able to do that. I might yeah. have my different. He might give me the wrong energy. I might have my crystals on today. I might be get the wrong energy. so. It's like it's like, bro. Let, you know what I'm saying? It, it's all about the the whole aura uh, of it. So yeah. I feel like it's not about the views. It's about the aura that we create. Yeah. That's really what it's about. No, like sure. if for you sure. go in a certain office, bro. And you go in this big old tower and you don't feel that energy, you don't feel that love. That's why when people come into my show, it's just like, bro, I try to let them know, like, bro, this ain't an interview. I'm not interrogating we you, bro. Talking. If you make a mistake, if you say something crazy about something you did in the past, bro, yeah. I'm gonna cut it out. Yeah, yeah. I ain't about, bro, you ain't, <laughs> ain't no police stuff going. Yeah. It's your all love, baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You want to pull up on me, like, hey, bro, I, I, I see what you put, put on that. But I'm going to pull up on you, bro. I told you not to pull up on me, bro. Yeah. It ain't no, you ain't no yeah. hate. It's all love. Mm -hmm. So I think it's all about the environment and the love, bro, because a lot of these people be having the platforms, getting the bag, 
getting the money. And bro, your po- your conversations is not as powerful as the ones we having. And ain't it ain't no no macho egotistical yeah, yeah, stuff. Sure. It's just we surgical with it. We yeah. try, bro. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. put in work for this because we care about now the art. And I don't want to waste your time. You know what I'm saying? Like you came to me, you came my way. I want to at least be like, dog. I ain't waste my time. Like that was some, that was a dope interview. Like the niggas dope. Like I want I want to mess with them on the, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Past this because a lot of people I have on the show, man. Female or male, I'll be hey man, everything good. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? Just checking in because I, I feel like some people who come on the show are just them dope people. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't look at no, I don't give a damn what you're doing, man. Is you good? Because you, you was a dope person when you came on the show. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I just, yeah, the number games can mess with a lot of people, man. But when you go on these platforms, I put my homegirl on game, man. Shout out to mm-hmm. Detroit Diamond. I say, listen, when you go on the podcast, they're going to tell you, like, they're going to ask you what you do. They're not going to tell you what you do because they don't know shit about you. Mm-hmm. And then she hit me back like, dog, you right. I'm mad that you told me because I know it's the not like. Yep. <laughs> now, and you said something about editing and stuff, man. You was, when you was on the uh, Adora and Daisy, I mm-hmm. said it now, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, you was yep. on their podcast. You were saying how you get anxiety from asking or saying the wrong thing on your show. Mm-hmm. Have there ever been times you said something that you had to just clip out because it's been times when he had to take something out like, hey, dog, you said some wild junk. Or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or I ain't roll home. And it about to be some dysfunction in family because somebody said something wrong. I'm like, cute though. You gotta take that out. It's mm. gonna mess up. It's gonna mess up the crib, though. Like, <laughs> have you ever had time like that on the show when you said something or a spank said something? Y'all thought about like, dog, we can't do it. Well, there's levels to it, right? Like the the, the way I'm talking on this podcast right now, this is being like red zone for like my first <laughs> five episodes, like just cussing and stuff. Like just like I said, the way that I was brought up, the way that I was raised, it's like, bro, I can't act like that on camera. I can't do that. For sure. So I feel like that me, me talking on the episode is just. A mm-hmm. different, you know what I'm saying, a phase of life that I was in at that time. But mm-hmm. it was not, it, it, I don't think I've had to really clip out a lot of stuff that I've said. Now, Spank, that's a different story. You know, when, <laughs> when, when, when he come on, he can tell you all about that, man. Yeah, but, yeah, he, you know, yeah. he always, man, at, at 22, bro, bro, I said some crazy stuff, bro. <laughs> I'm like, you know, but now even he get comfortable. It's just like, yeah. bro, you want me to clip it out? I'm like, I think we had a, uh, a, a moment in like maybe two, three episodes ago. I was like, bro, I'm not putting that. He like, bro, put that out, bro. <laughs> Put that out. I was like, all right, I'm going to put it out, bro. Because cause I already be knowing, like, bro, he's going to hit me up about it. But he just, like, we just getting comfortable. And yeah. I think it's really just about, like, bro, you know, the world ain't going to catch on fire if this come out, bro. Yeah, it's just, it sure. is what it is. We've been authentic, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just let it be what it is. But, yeah, for for a long time, I would have a lot of anxiety about putting out episodes, bro. We got this episode that's coming out. <laughs> and it, it was one of them ones for both yeah, of us, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you see when it come out. Yeah. <laughs> and then with social media, though, it's so heavy. Like, they, they mute you in a minute. Mm-hmm. There, you know what I'm saying? It'd be something they they take down. But you got to watch how you... You gotta watch how you type things. Mm. I said what? I said some crazy junk. Uh, I think my brother threatened me on uh, on my Facebook status, mm. <laughs> and they had they cut that junk out. I t- I said something on your junk. They I just put laugh out loud like you crazy or something. They cut that out. So like, yeah, social media is really you know getting heavy on what you say and, and watching what you post. I just made a TikTok for the first time because of a guest. She said I should post stuff from the show. As soon as I posted something, I guess I had cussed on it. They took that shit right off. Like, mm. <laughs> like damn. I don't need to be on this TikTok. I'm too old. Like I told her. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, they just, be, they just be bullying people for real, yeah. for real. They just be bullying people for real, for real. And, and, and to YouTube, man, y'all need to cut me that check, man. Because I still ain't got my YouTube checks from Google AdSense, bro. That stuff don't make no sense. I've been trying <laughs> to get my bag for like six, eight months, bro. Yeah. And I still ain't got none of my YouTube money, bro. And I'm, I'm on Google chat rooms and everybody, yeah. bro, we ain't getting the money. I'm like, bro, we got to gang up on these dudes, bro. <laughs> I'm about to stream it from the highest treetop. Like, bro, they robbing us, bro. Man. I ain't get my money yet. Man. But, I mean, shit, that, that's all That's all like a pick and play, bro. Because I didn't mm. experience that, bro. Um, I had 150,000 followers on Facebook, on my ancestral plan on Facebook, because I had I was on all platforms. Mm. Bro, they uh, kicked me out for posting a clip of Dave Chappelle's comedy special. Man. Kicked me off. Took my platform, 150,000. I was making a whole bunch of money from that. Kicked me off in one second, bro. Never got it back? Never got it back, bro. And I know people at Facebook who work at Facebook. Yeah. My man's... One of his people, one of his boys is like one of the head executives over at Facebook. And I was like, bro, hey, bro, tell him. And he's like, bro, we can't get this back, bro. They got you on like a red zone. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I know what that's about. But that's another story man. on that kind of stuff, man. We, we in the fight, yeah, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Have, uh, no, we, you would guess, man. Have you ever had guests change your opinion on something or change the way you believed in something? <laughs> Yeah, man, for real, for real. And I think that's probably one of the most impactful and the greatest things about having a podcast. Mm-hmm. It's because I'm very, uh, I don't want to say a opinionated person, but I'm, I'm very like, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really strong on my, on my core beliefs, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's very rare that somebody can come up 
and you know tell me something that I just be like, dang man, I never thought about it that way. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Because in order for it to be core, I have mm. to consider all options and opinions. Yeah. But then somebody might give me an option opinion that I've never considered. Yeah. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, wow. Yeah. Courtney, I feel like he wanted them ones, man. Okay. Every, after every episode, bro, I always it always expands my mind. Like, mm -hmm. man, uh, we was having a conversation after uh, the last episode we did, and it was just super impactful, bro. I can I, tell. I can see y'all two probably like that conversation gonna go after the show. Yeah, all <laughs> three of us, me, Spanky, and Courtney, bro, yeah. we just be chopping it up, man. man. Was like, we was in the parking lot just chopping it up. It was crazy because uh, <laughs> he was just saying some crazy stuff. I can't say it on camera. But he was just like, he was just like, bro, man, God ain't gonna keep for this. Do man, just be you? I'm like, oh damn, man. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's facts, though. That's facts. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, I, every every conversation that we had, I learned uh, some stuff on the Enduring Daisy podcast. You For know sure. what I'm saying? For sure. Uh, shout out to them and just uh, the 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 one we had with David McCuller, uh mm -hmm. over at Inner Wealth. Shout out to Inner Wealth one, one more time. But um, bro, I always learn something because yeah. that's the point of having a podcast, bro. I don't want to just shoot the shit all day. Sometimes, For some sure. days I want to get on and I want to. Most days I want to learn something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't yeah. want to just get on there and do. Man, you know? I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Last one with uh, LJ had me wanting to go and box. Woo! <laughs> they motivated the hell out of me, man. Like for real. Like and I'm like, damn. Like, I got it. Make you want to do something when you see somebody so passionate about what they do. It just make you want to go even Nigga, harder man, than what you do. Made me want to box, and I got knocked <laughs> out boxing when I was a kid. You remember Mario knocked me out when we was in the. In, 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 in. <laughs> Do that, bro. The only time everybody, bro, I got flatlined, bro. He got me wanting to get back in the ring, and I got nightmares, dog. But, so, you know, I already know he on that motivational energy man, forever. Like bro, him. got me wanting to work out for yeah. real, all that, bro. Oh, yeah, we already, me and my wife were talking about that, man. Get just, We getting older, mm -hmm. man. So, you got to, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to wait till it's too late. You got to get in mm -hmm. shape, man. And um, I like the one you did with uh, with uh, Denai Porter. Mm, that, was a, that was a yeah. dope one That was a dope one And I like y'all solo joints Man when y'all just talking And stuff like that mm -hmm. Man like it, it, It's no dull moments In y'all conversation Like I, And that's what I like About y'all stuff man Man Now uh, Man I wanna talk about time man Because I was at work the other day I was scaring myself dog Like <laughs> I just I always think about life man When I'm by myself That's why I hate working alone sometimes So, so now I'm by myself man And I'm just thinking about time Like time mm -hmm. Time I'm getting older Like my son will be 15 on Monday man so it's like when you grow up, growing up, you you hear like older people always say, appreciate time, appreciate time. Like, don't take time for granted, man. Like, but it's like, we don't think about time until it's too late. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think about that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, you you know, you, you you grew up, you lost your father. I lost my father. I lost my mother too. It's like, but you don't, you think about that time, like you, you won't, you will never get that back. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you guys just appreciate the time and stuff, man. Do you ever like sit back and reflect and think about that? Like. I mean, I feel like sometimes we get caught up in the time, mm -hmm. you know, and just we, we, we can't just really enjoy it sometimes because we feel like uh, our time is is defined by like what we did in it instead mm -hmm. of just living in it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like this time right now, this is like grind time for me. For like, sure. it's time to run up the bag. It's time to do this. So sometimes I might not be able to like fully enjoy the moment because mm -hmm. this is like, you know, like you be at the small moments, just chilling with your family, man, yeah, or just yeah. chilling with the homies, man. It's just like, you can't even enjoy that because it's grind every day. Like, when I tell people I grind, like, it's podcast grind 24 7, like, it's really that with <laughs> no, me, bro. For sure, for Anybody sure. who know me know that it's really that with me. So yeah, it's just like, yeah, yeah bro, it's just. I try to do that, man. Like the people around me, man. I just tell people I love you, man. Like that's that's my way of really appreciating time. Cause man. like you said, like when when you got people pass away, like I tell my mama like every day, man. Yeah. Like I call my mama every day, man. I always tell my mama like, man, I love you for real. Yeah. Because that's kind of one of the things that stood out with me with my father. Like man, I gotta tell people I love them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just so I can always, you know, leave off on good terms. So I for always sure. just put that energy out there. And man, it's funny you say that, man. Cause my wife and my brother, they all call me out, man. Cause they say I'm. T I was too tough to say I love you and stuff. Like when my brother said it to me, I used to be like, "I love you too, nigga." Like mm -hmm. I had to put something tough at the end. Yeah. But <laughs> but now I get to the point that you don't know when you might, you know, what I'm saying your time is up and stuff. So I do say it more, and I don't try to make it tough and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like I tell my brother that, I tell my kids that, and stuff like that. My 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 youngest son, five, he always say that. Like so, I I'm always telling him I love him too and stuff. So, I don't want to be like, nigga, I love you, nigga, little nigga, I love you. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> cause a lot of times we try to throw it in there just to keep that, you know what I'm saying? I'm a man, like. Yeah, bro, I mean, shit, I was battling with that too. I mean, I feel <laughs> like the Courtney episode really helped me grow with that. Yeah. You know, we was having, we was talking, he was just like, man, my girl, she do something hurt my feelings. I just be like, listen, man, you hurt my feelings. I said, damn, nigga, you say that shit? He said, bro, I just tell him, like, bro, mm -hmm. it don't care if my homeboy, I don't care who it is. I just be like, man, you hurt my feelings. And Courtney, a real solid dude, yeah, man. Yeah, so it's just like, like yeah. I'm like, bro. 
You said that? He's like, yeah, I can see me saying that, but you been saying that? He's like, yeah. I'm like, damn. Yeah. So I, boy, I was in a relationship, man. That's what I said. I was like, babe, you just hurt my feelings, man. No. Like, nigga, what? I'm like, damn, but <laughs> <laughs> it feels good to get it off your chest, though. No. And, and that's what stops us from expressing no, ourselves duh. like because of that reaction, but it yeah. feels good to get that off your chest. Like, yeah. man, I was authentic with you. Yeah. I didn't put up no shield. I ain't, but sure. I, I was authentic. You yeah. ain't, but you couldn't accept the authentic me, and I feel like that just frees us up when we just be authentic. Like, yeah, I said that but what did I want to say? I wanted to say this. So yeah, nigga, yeah, let yeah. me say that. I'm yeah, gonna say yeah, that. Sure. So and we'd be too scared to say it. Like nah, we just, just say it, as a man, you it's certain things you just was brought up not to say, not to mm -hmm. do. You know what I'm saying? With that whole if you fall down, don't cry. You know what I'm saying? Don't show emotions and stuff like that. And I think that's starting to change now, man. Like like with my son, I, it, nigga, if you hurt yourself, you cry, cry, dog. Shit, cause, uh, it's okay, nigga. You can't you, you can't know, cover them with tears because you you in pain. Because my thing is right. Just because I say you hurt my feelings, don't mean I won't hurt you. Yeah. Just because <laughs> I <laughs> say you, just because I say you hurt my feelings, don't mean I can't be on some manly macho stuff. This no. is just me being authentic and, and me being vulnerable. Yeah. Like don't mean that's why I be telling people like just because we be vulnerable, and we be authentic, don't mean that's not that dog in us that yeah, can yeah. go to the other side. The fact that I'm that's that's what I always say, man. People they fear the monster. I fear the monster tamer, man. Yeah, I yeah, fear yeah. the people who the one who tames him. Man. I know a lot of calm <laughs> dudes in the hood. They smoke their weed and it's just like you know he a dog for real. Like <laughs> the fact that you, you you really piping up on dog and he really calm. I respect dog. him because yeah. I know the level he can take it yeah, to. For you know sure. I respect that. I don't respect the one who always hot off the top. You know what I'm saying? Who always just going off? You know what I'm yeah. saying? I don't respect that. I respect the one who can tame the monster. Mm -hmm. I don't respect the monster. And that's why I think I heard Kevin Gates say on an interview like, dog, are you tough all the time with your kids? With your mm -hmm. wife, like dog, like you ain't gotta be tough all the time, dog. Like it's okay. Like I'm gonna tell my wife that, like you heard my feelings, see what she say, like. <laughs> Nick, woo! Oh, that hurt your feelings, dog. For real, man. Shit. Yeah, that damn. Cause she said to no me, I think I feel bad. Like damn, yeah. I hurt you. Yeah. Like you know, what I'm nah. <laughs> man. That's wild, man. Not, what what's your um what's your tip, man, to somebody who like want to start a podcast, man? Want to you know say who might be like they started, it, but they might not be getting the love that they want right away. Yeah, I know with me when I first started, I was always paying attention to the views and the numbers. It wasn't until recently, I'm like, man, I don't care about the views. I know it was a dope interview and they can go back and watch it and see it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what's your tip to somebody that's going through that struggle of like not getting the eyes that they really want right now on their platform? It don't have to be podcasts, it could be anything that they do. Well, you know, uh, I, I would say not pay attention to the numbers as well. Mm -hmm. But um, what, what what I would just say is, man, you got to take this stuff and you got to treat it like it's already what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Like from day one, we said, man, we the biggest podcast in the world. We da, da, da. And the reason I said that is because that's the energy that I have to put forth to get the product that we get. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the energy that, bro, if, if people knew what I really do to make that podcast do what it do, mm -hmm. they would understand the, the energy that I put into it. So it's just like, man, when, you, when, when I hear people with podcasts right my homeboys and my, my homegirls they be like hey man check out my podcast and you up there laughing like haha like that's cool be authentic yeah. but with me it's just like bro I treat this like I already got a million dollar deal for sure, for sure, for and sure. I'm trying to treat it surgical I gotta be surgical with it yeah, yeah, you know what fact. I'm saying so if you gonna do it Stop treating it like, you know what I'm saying, something happened on it and you didn't cut that part out. Did something fall over, some water spill yeah, over? Like, be yeah. surgical <laughs> with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, for and sure. It, it don't happened. mean you got to take it so seriously, but just be like you are already 10 years in the game. Yeah, fast. That's what I tell my little brother when he went off to college. I said, listen, you a freshman, but act like you a senior. Mm -hmm. when, when freshmen, when they on campus, they always, you know, real antsy and stuff. They always looking around. But you can tell who the senior is because we really just don't give a damn. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? saying? <laughs> we walking through campus, man. You got your book bag he got the, the 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 freshman got the book bag the junior i mean the sophomore he you know he ain't got no you know he all wild and stuff yeah. the, the junior he got the briefcase and the senior we ain't got nothing we don't give a damn yeah. we know all <laughs> we don't even get by the time you get to your senior year you don't get no textbooks anymore because yeah, you sure. know that's some bull crap you know you in class so you, that's how you know the senior because we ain't got no textbooks we don't give a damn we just move <laughs> because we know we not finna go over the textbooks in class for anyway sure. we for didn't sure. get enough class to know the teacher just tell you to get them textbooks to get your money Hell yeah yeah that's how you know the difference between a rookie and a vet. That's why yeah. I tell people when you're doing a podcast, bring that energy, man. For sure. Like you already 10 years in the game. Stop yeah. being all antsy and stuff, bro. Relax, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 for sure. And that's why you say you, you act like you 10 years in the game. That's why I call myself the podcast MVP. Yes. He calls himself producer of the year. We putting that in the atmosphere. Like, yes. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to believe in yourself because if you don't, who the fuck is? Yes. That, you know that, what that, I'm that's all it is, bro. I know we not the number one in the world. I know we not the number one in Detroit. I know we not the number one anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm going to tell you the energy that I put into it, bro, can't nobody. Tell me I ain't number one, man. Sure. What I didn't did for this, man. You know for how sure. long we be editing, bro. Editing it up. We doing it. We mixing the magic, bro. That, 
<laughs> I'm talking about late Look, nights, man. Yeah. We number one. You dig? Hell yeah, you can always say that for facts. Now, the uh, ancestral plane, man. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the first time I think I heard about it was from Wallow. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. He met, he mentioned you, dog. And um, I, I used to see it a lot. And I, I, I ain't got, I ain't saved a whole bunch of it, man. Cause sometimes you need that motivation in the morning, or you going through some stuff, man. Like, what made you start that? You know what I'm saying? And um, you know what I'm saying? Carry on with that. Well, um, the ancestral plan when I, when I, cause I was in the sports realm, so I was, you know, running all these sports blogs and stuff like that, putting out content and stuff. But it kind of was weighing me down a little bit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Kind of getting like. I was just like, dang, bro, I've been doing this sports stuff for two years, man. I've been promised courtside, you know, courtside media access and this and that. Mm. And I ain't gotten much, but I'm a grinding, I'm a grinding grind it out. And I was just like, I need something to keep me motivated in this game, right? Mm. So I created the ancestral plan to kind of motivate me. It was just motivational videos for real, for real just like it is now. Yeah, yeah, for so sure. So then I was just putting up the kind of putting it in the, after my first video, uh, Rizzo Islam, I don't know if you're familiar oh, with yeah, him. I heard it. Yep, but yep. he uh like promoted my first video. He like reposted it and I got like two hundred you know followers the first day and i was just like dang this could be something yeah, yeah, yeah. so i kept going i kept going and um i say around thirty thousand followers uh while i have saw my page he just dm me like bro uh what's your number i was like what you got my number. <laughs> he was just like uh he was like bro you got the greatest page on instagram bro you got this you got that man you're gonna be big you're gonna be huge i was running at taco bell at the time he like bro they're gonna pay for you to go to colleges bro you're gonna do documentaries you're gonna do yeah. i'm like bro what the fuck are you talking about bro <laughs> like i'm like bro Documentaries that gonna pay for me, bro. I'm working at me. I'm working at Taco Bell, bro. Yeah, like sure. I don't got nothing, bro. I know I'm giving a vibe to the people. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But, I, bro, I don't know how I'm about to make money on this. And he was just like, bro, you gonna change the world? Keep doing it. And that was the motivation that I needed. Man, so, for sure. Fast forward now, about two years later, man. I just got done speaking at North uh, North Central uh, North Carolina Central University mm. up in uh, uh, Riley, man. Uh, mm. Up in Durham at the Durham uh, Success Summit, For and sure. that was the first speaking gig that I got, man. And I, I had called Wallow, and I was just like, "Listen, bro, you was right, man. Yeah. I didn't see what you was talking about, man, but you was right." And he been supporting me the whole time, bro. Man, always repost me, dope, man. man. Bro, man. always be calling me, man. He called me like five days ago, just like because uh, he was in Ar Ann Arbor for the game. Yeah. He was like, "Bro, you mobile with it?" And I was like, "Damn, bro, it was you know uh, the studio closed today." But I was like, like, "Man, bro, you got to be mobile with it." He like, "Bro, all my podcast equipment, I know how to mix the audio. Yeah. I know how to bring. Man. I bring all the equipment." He like, "Bro, you need a duffel bag, bro." He just <laughs> give me the game. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm asking him like, "Bro, how you get signed?" And he just give me the game like, "Bro, it's not about numbers. It's about impact, bro. You got." that core following bro sure. they will sign you they'll give you a bag yeah, yeah, so he yeah. just always drops the game man and, you so know, that's, how you, to Wallow, that's man. how you talk to him tell him showers everybody say what up <laughs> yeah for real <laughs> no, man. I, no I love dog I ain't all Joe side dog Gillian Wallow got dog I'm fuck with their podcast before he was even doing podcasts I was messing with them individually and then I'm like damn they cousins like and then I, like man their podcast is dope dog like I, I love they jump man like them I like Joe Buttons. I like Maul Rory. Like, you know what I'm saying but them you know you can get that hood jump from them mm -hmm. they gonna ask those questions for real you know what I'm saying like those real hood questions you want to you want to know and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. I mess with them and and they they both you know what I'm saying be on, on there just talking shit to each other and stuff like yeah, yeah they, man. They, they, they 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 just dope yeah, man. Shout out Wallow man, he a real one for real for real. Oh no, for sure for sure man. And uh, one thing I ask people man, give me some young nigga thinking versus some shit you've been through. With hmm. for like you know what I'm saying like some shit that you was thinking as a youngin, but you don't you totally against that right now as a as a you know what I'm saying older you. Mm. That's a tough question, man. That's a great question, but that's a tough question. Um, shoot, man. I don't want to say uh, it's a lot of stuff that it kind of held true. A mm -hmm. lot of things held true, man. Um, I say the number one thing growing up uh, that kind of changed my perspective is I felt like everybody who was in the streets mm -hmm. was a certain type of way. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, uh, originally growing up, I grew up in a uh, private school, so I went to private school. So it's kind of like I didn't really have that element of, of that crazy until I said I went to Chicago. So yeah. and then that's kind of when I got exposed. But <laughs> when I came back to Flint and I went to high school, a lot of the dudes that I, you know what I'm saying, my best friends, my homies to this day, they come from the streets. And it was like, dang, that perception that I had of these dudes from the streets was this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you on, you know, this type of time all day, bro. But these be some cool dudes. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure. Like. Bro, the, the the most the most savage dude that you see in the street, bro, he's somebody like coolest homeboy. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Sure. Some yep, people yep. some some people really just be like, bro, he the coolest dude ever. Yeah. He just crazy with you. He crazy yeah. with these other people. Yeah, yeah, for he sure. cool with me. Yeah. So that was kind of what I had to learn. Like, bro, just because somebody might have did that don't mean that's who they um, who they are. That's just what they did. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, some people who might come from a different type of lifestyle, grew up a different type of way, you know, single parent household, whatever you, you know, whatever it may be. You know what I'm saying? Just because they might act out a certain way don't mean they not the same as you, bro. Yeah, like, Sure, I didn't, sure. bro. We all the same, bro. Yeah, yeah, no, no, fast, fast. And the last thing I want to get to before we get to you know our closing segment, 
what what's your thoughts, man? Like on and I know you're a young cat, man, but like your thoughts on relationship and marriage. Like it seemed like n- niggas ain't think about that. They think about having a kid before they think about having mm-hmm. the, the wedding. They think about the baby shower before they think about a wedding ceremony. Like what's your thoughts on that, man? Why you you know why is it like that with? For, I don't know about you know in the white community, but with us it seemed like it's like that with us. Like we would be like, oh, we we would be like, fuck some marriage, but we would knock a girl up. Well, um, I, I really think it's just about that social programming of um, what if it, I mean we, we we don't really exalt you know uh, a woman who's really gonna, like ride or die, man. So sure. you know what we exalt in today's culture is just getting to the bag and looking like this and doing that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You hear these rappers and these artists like, bro, I I hit up his girl, man. I take his girl. That's what brings that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what brings that real energy, man. Because no dude wants to spend ten years with a you know woman and then walk come in the room and it's just like, man, Drake. You know what I'm saying? He he, he with your you know what I'm saying? And it's sure. just like because it's always about who got the bigger bag. And yeah. you know what that'll take a dude brain no. in like, bro. Something about to get laid to me, like, bro, like, bro, that's my woman, that's, you know, so Man. nobody wants to go there, so I think that's really what stops mm-hmm. people from getting in that love mindset, because we know love is a dangerous game, sure. if it's not played the right way, and I feel like people not playing the right way now, <laughs> people using no. Chico's out here, people yeah. PPP and all this, other stuff. they got the bag, they got the money phone, <laughs> pulling up in the charges, doing donuts, yeah. and your woman right there, you know, with the, with the, the flag waving and all that stuff. <laughs> Like, no, nobody want that, dog. So no, I feel like everybody wants everybody wants a relationship. Everybody wants that loyalty when mm-hmm. they when they meet the right one. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm sure, saying? Facts. And they want to protect her. Like, oh my gosh, she's not tampered with. They want to protect her. Yeah, dog. But when you got that one, she like, yeah, I've been in the club. It's like, damn, man, you, you in that <laughs> like, game? You yeah, in that game? For sure. You gonna be doing them donuts in a yeah, minute? Yeah, I can't play with back. you, baby girl. No, I can see a flat like. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Oh shit, man! Yeah, dog. You got and like I said, that's why I, I never thought about marriage, bro. Like growing up, like I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. Like I don't. Mm-hmm. But then when you find that right one, like you said, she ain't been tampered with. She, you know, what I'm saying, oh shit, she got. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. And you like, oh, I gotta go ahead. Like, and it, and it ain't just cause that because like she. I heard you say on um on the podcast with Adora and Daisy about bringing the best out of you and stuff like that. You need a woman. I agree with you mm-hmm. because like I feel like real talk. Since I've been married for a year and a half, and I felt like. Things been ascended ever since. Things been getting better for me ever since. Like, I've been improving. I was, you know, saying I had a bullshit job, and it's like right after we got married, like we had our daughter. I got a better job. Things started coming better. Things start coming easier. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just been a little better for me. I heard Charlemagne say that once he start doing his bullshit and got married, like his life just went crazy. I mean, imagine all the stupid stuff we do in the pursuit of women. All the bags we blow in the pursuit of women. All the dumb decisions. Everything we do is for women. You know what I'm saying? So when you got that woman and she's solid and she's down, she not taking from you. She adding to you now. Yeah, so now sure. you you growing while these other men is, you know, getting less and less because they blowing the bag. they yeah. wasting their time. They yeah. going down and down and down. You building up, build up because she's adding to you, for man. For sure. Adding value. And mm-hmm. like I said, I feel like we add value to each other. Things that she... Maybe lacking on I can pick her up And things I'm lacking on She can pick me up mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying Like I, something small Like the bills I'm always the type of yes. dude Hey man what? How much do I gotta pay To make sure it don't get turned off mm-hmm. She <laughs> She the one like Hey pay it off So mm-hmm. I'll be like Alright you right You know yep. what I'm saying <laughs> So I need that in my life Because I was just a A, a nigga like Hey what's the pass do mm-hmm. Oh it's 400 oh, I gotta pay 150 Here you go let me keep that rest of that, that two fifty in my pocket. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So it's yes. like she's like, why not pay it right now so you can have that money in the long run? I'm like, damn, you right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You so gotta, it's have like, it. you gotta have. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have that. So I do agree with you on that one, man. Now we uh we already finished off, man. Top three. I give you a category. You give me your top three. Mm-hmm. Top three moments in life. Hmm. Um. I don't. That's that's a good one. Um. I say uh, number three. I, I, I see. I I can't really say off the top. It just just the moments that come in my head, okay, right? For sure. Number three uh, probably be when I uh, when I made my first touchdown. I was playing football back in like the <laughs> s- seventh grade, and uh, my grandpa he liked the most like serious, mean, you know what I'm saying, yeah. dude you could ever meet in life for the longest. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I always calling me meathead and stuff like that. Man. But uh, <laughs> I had hit this. Uh, I, I was playing defense uh, on when I was playing for Bendel uh, back in the day, mm. and uh, I hit the the, uh, the um, quarterback, and I had got the ball, and I had ran it down and got a touchdown. Mm. And I looked in the stands. He like, oh, really? I saw my grandpa. He was like, oh man, that's my grandson. After the game, he like, man, you gonna go to the league? Like, I always remember that moment. Uh, 
after the game party rocking in the house tonight oh, yeah. playing and stuff so I remember that moment very and I was just like bro this is I feel like I'm I feel like I'm like Randy Moss or something yeah, dog sure. I feel like I'm the greatest so man. that was a good moment man and um I say number two man um uh, shit. Um, I, I say starting the podcast. That was a good moment. I remember when I first started the podcast, man. It was a big moment for me, for real, for real, mm-hmm. for, for multiple reasons. But um, yeah, it was a big moment for me. For sure. And um, I say number one, uh, like the most vivid memory that I have. You know what I'm saying? And these are not accomplishments. These are just moments because I don't feel like accomplishments is the greatest moment. Just because I accomplished this, this is moment great. Because you can accomplish something, win an Oscar, sure. and everything in your life is just like horrible. I'm yeah. saying like when I was <laughs> yeah, at my most happy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I remember I was like eight years old we was on like a road trip to like the million family march in washington dc mm. and we was listening to uh boogie wonderland by uh okay. um uh, earth winning uh, yeah. uh earth winning fire yeah. and uh i remember that was just like the greatest moment all my family <laughs> were on a road trip we yeah. all you know what I'm saying we got the portable cereal boxes in the car and stuff we just like <laughs> it was just the greatest moment ever so that was number one for real for real. oh yeah for sure now do you do, do y'all do a lot of stuff as a family man do y'all do a lot of things together or like are y'all separate because we you know the holidays coming around stuff like that like and you, you know when you get those important figures in your in your family that pass away, it kind of like break the family away. No, nah, do y'all st- do y'all stick together and still do things to, as nah, a collection? Man. Yeah, man, all of us we like a unit, man. We solid even through the problems. I, I feel like our problems is not like you know other people's problems for lack of a better phrase. It's just like. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just, just uh, our stuff is different. Like we, w- nobody hates nobody. Everybody love everybody. We for like sure. we family for real, for real. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's 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 just it's just a whole lot of love, man. Like even if I have an issue with, like I might have an issue with my brother, man. And he, and you know what I'm saying? And, and I might go and see him later on that day. And yeah. I got a real big issue. It's just like we never let issues come oh, yeah, for sure. between us showing up for each other, just being around yeah, each other, yeah. anything. Like Trust we me, might I... we might have a huge issue and we still in the same room. Yeah, with yeah. Each other. I know. Yeah, I know that saying. <laughs> me and my you brother know? argue all the time. I feel like the problem is. When <laughs> people have issues and they let a lot of separation bro when Man. the issues happen we still together because it's gonna be solved if we're in a room with an issue day in day out it's gonna get solved yeah, for sure for one sure. of these days for sure. and you should be able to tell us each other how you feel without somebody you know feeling yeah. some type of way yeah i call him and be like man how you feel about this man my girl make me mad and stuff like that like man you acting like a you know what right now yeah all right, all right, dog. Yeah. <laughs> like, I might be mad, but I needed to hear that. Because yeah. when you think about it, damn, I was acting soft. Like, yeah. that was a weak jug I was doing. Nah, that'd be me and Spank all day, man. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure, man. Give me your, uh, your, I'm not going to put you on the spot say your top three guests, because I just, that ain't mm-hmm. right. Give me your top three. Give me three guests that you, you want your wish list. Your mm-hmm. top three wish list for a, a guest on the show. Of all time. Just period. Yeah. Okay. That you want. Like, that you want. That you yeah. Because there's a lot of guests with. that I can have access to that I might want on right yeah. now. But it's like all time. Uh, yeah. Man, I actually made a real list. Uh, my big homie made me make a list of my top ten. It's on my phone. But um, okay. I say one of my biggest would probably be I want Kevin Gates on. Okay. Uh, I definitely. Don't that be a dope conversation between y'all? Woo! <laughs> Kevin Gates, um, Mahershala Ali, okay. and um, shoot, it's a lot of them. I want a classical. I want a classical music artist, man. Just cause I'm, I'm really into that. I want to know where their mind goes. So probably yeah. Nicholas Brittle. Okay. Probably okay. get him on. That'd yeah, be, yeah, that'd yeah. be dope. What about uh, if you can bring back somebody from the dead? Like uh, uh who, who are those three people be? Conversation with. Yeah. Number one, my father. Uh, okay. number two probably be mm, Malcolm X. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, number three. Um, that's a tough one. Number three. Um. Dick Gregory for okay. sure for oh, yeah. sure oh, yeah. Dick oh, yeah. Gregory yeah, yeah. Dick Gregory yeah <laughs> Dick Gregory for sure for sure man no, my, my dad my dad wasn't Muslim but he, he like loved the, 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 the nation of Islam like he used to tell he used to have us I forgot I know Malcolm X's birthday is like March something mm. so we just you know you stay home for Martin Luther King Day he like fuck it you stay home for Malcolm X's birthday too mm. so like you know what I'm saying he made me read the uh, autobiography of Malcolm X when I was a young dude like in elementary school like mm-hmm. and people doing book reports on Rosa Parks and, and, and Martin Luther King I was doing mine on Malcolm X mm. you know what I'm saying so yeah he, he loved Malcolm X stuff give me your um Give me your top. Give me your top three. Your top three fools, man. We are, we are, we are dumb it down a little bit. <laughs> mm, number one, lasagna. Number right. two, pizza, and then number three, peach cobbler. Give me your uh, top three. Um, what you top three things you look for in a woman? Um, shoot. Never asked that one. <laughs> yeah, I ain't, I ain't never been asked that. That's a good question. No, I, never, I never asked that one. Nobody. Yeah, that, that's like, a good one. That's a good one. Um. I would just say uh, creative. Um, 
I would say um patient and um patience is number one, boy. <laughs> I don't even want to say loyal because I feel like that's like a like a leash type of thing. I mean, I would say loyal, but it's yeah. just like. You just gotta be loving. You just gotta be feminine. You just gotta for be sure. very feminine. You yeah, know? for sure, for sure. Yeah, because it'd be a lot. Of, I mean, I, I know I might get killed for this, but it'd be a lot of women that try to play a man role mm -hmm. in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I understand if you a single mom and you trying to like, but don't be a man with me. Like, let me wear the pants. Like, you know what I'm saying? Of course, I'm gonna take what you say, and you know what I'm saying. I'm not gonna just disregard what you say, but let me be a man. A lot of times, women don't let a man be a man. They don't let a man make the decisions in the house. They feel like. And that could be coming up from a toxic mom. Because I was thinking about something like a toxic mom versus a deadbeat dad. Who's mm -hmm. really bad? Mm -hmm. Who's the worst? Mm. So it's like, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Maybe you had it on the show or something like, because a mom could be brought up a certain way and seeing that her mom ain't been right with men. So she bring that to her next relationship. And she might have a good dude, but she don't give a damn. And then deadbeat dad, you know, he just ain't around. So it's like a deadbeat dad who's not around or a toxic mom who's around every day and feeding you this bad Bad energy. I mean, shit. The minister say the mama. That's your first god. Mm -hmm. It's the mama. The mama's first god. You you know you get out the womb and you come straight to mama. So, I mean, imagine you know every child has an inclination to name mom. Mm -hmm. and so she that figure and she destroy you. You know, yeah. it's something like when your dad destroy you. You got that animosity, <laughs> that evilness to you. But when your mom do something, it's like, dang, I can't even be mad at her. Damn, that's mama. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But your yep. dad's like, man, fuck this. Yeah, man, for sure. You want to you want to challenge him? Yeah. You want to challenge him? But it's like, dang, that's mom. I can't believe she said that to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dad might have said to him like, I know dad just tripping. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> yeah. mom said no, that. No, you hurt. It's the truth. Yeah. And that's when so, you go back to say when you say you hurt my feelings. If a woman said it to you, you yeah. gonna be hurt. Like it's gonna sting. <laughs> I'm still hurt. <laughs> 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 right. still, give me your uh, give me your top three movies, man. Woo, um, Inception probably is up there. I don't know if the I don't know the order, but okay. Inception is up there. Um, Shawshank Redemption and uh, oh, that's my nigga. Oh, I love um, that. that's, that's my movie. Dog. Number three. Uh, shoot, I probably three. seen Shawshank Redemption about hundred. Day to Earth stood still. Okay. That's a good one. Now you seem like a reader, man. Yeah, give me a, give the people the top three books. Mm, I would say um, the Skin I'm In. Mm -hmm. Is a good book. Um, uh, Message to the Black Man. That should probably be, num be number one. Message to the Black Man. The Skin I'm In. Mm -hmm. um, it, it it just depends on what what you're trying to find. If you're trying okay. to find some you know mental health elevation type stuff, or you're just trying mm -hmm. to make you know something entertaining. But I'm just give you, give you what comes up to my mind. The Heart of Darkness is a good book uh, mm -hmm. by Joseph S. Conrad. It is you know I, I ended up referencing this book the other day because Race to Fire and I made a post and you know about mm. uh, you know culture and all that type of stuff. I, mean, yeah. I was going back and forth. I don't go back and forth with people in the comments, <laughs> but it's just a book based on like um, them going into the Congo and really just like uh, the first person uh, accounts of this person really just seeing the sickness of Europeans. Like mm. he was like, bro, they left the city out in England, went mm. into the jungle, and turned into the devil. <laughs> That's why it's called the Heart of Darkness because yeah, yeah, yeah. he was saying like. Listen, you take them from all that civility, you take them from all the public eyes, and they have a heart of darkness. Because mm -hmm. he was talking about how they was putting the heads of the African tribesmen on spikes, and they was doing all that type yeah, of stuff yeah. to the women. So, I don't want to be on the side, <laughs> but, no, but yeah. if you into that real conscious, deep stuff, and you yeah. really into that, read that. Heart of, heart of darkness. Okay, man. Now, last one, I'm going to give you top three uh, outside y'all's top three podcasts, man, that you mess with. Um... Top three podcasts um, in Detroit or just like period, just in, just in general, period, period. Um, oh dang, that's a good one. Um, I used to really like the Day and Night podcast by mm -hmm. uh, Trey Good. I don't know if he still does it, but that was like my favorite podcast when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Um, that one. Um, I love the Adoring Daisy podcast. I'm not even gonna hold you. I'm not even capping. Like yeah. I love their podcast. This is super down to earth, yeah, 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 super yeah. authentic. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I, I enjoy that. You know mm. what I'm saying? Just when I, I hear people and not putting on front, it's like it keeps me tapped in to what's going on in life. Because sure, sure, I'm yeah. super tapped out. Yeah. So it's like, okay, that's what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, I can listen to that while I'm doing something while for I'm sure. driving. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm tapped in with that. Mm -hmm. And um, number three, uh, I would have said it was the Joe Button podcast, but I really haven't watched him like that since Roy and Ma left. Yeah. Um, Million dollars worth of game. Shout out to my guy. Yeah, Million dollars yeah. worth of game. That's definitely my top three. Now we, we we usually people you know we end off in a certain way, but we're not gonna do it this time. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you know I know you watch the versus battles, mm -hmm. so I give you a versus. And you tell me who you think will come out as a winner. It ain't gotta be rap. It be whatever. But I'm gonna start off with rap. Nas versus uh, Hove. Mm, I go Nas. Damn! Finally, finally somebody agree with me, dog. Everybody be looking at me crazy. I grew crazy. up on Nas. I yeah, don't, I don't, me too. You know. Soul food versus seafood. Uh, so food So food Yeah Okay 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 Um Damn What's the nut What's the, you, you tapped into Detroit music 
A little bit, yeah. Side baby versus uh Vezo. Side baby, yeah. <laughs> I people, that'll probably throw a whole bunch of people yeah. out. I don't know. I, I really don't listen to Detroit rap like yeah. that, but I listen to some Side baby songs. He be going in, bro. <laughs> like whoa. Yeah, no. Anita Baker versus Sade. Uh, you said who? Oh, Sade. Shot, Sade. Okay. Um, Sade probably Sade. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you say nothing. Don't you say nothing disrespectful, dog. <laughs> he don't like. He don't like Sade. <laughs> Martin versus Fresh Prince. Uh, Fresh Prince. All right. Boys in the Hood versus Menace to Society. Menace to Society. All right. Did uh um uh the, the Tupac uh biopic or the uh, Biggie biopic? I only watched the biggie one. Oh yeah, Tupac ain't worth it anyway. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was all no, no, Tupac biopic wasn't that good. It could have oh. been better. I think if they would have gave it to John Singleton, it would have been better. Oh yeah, probably. Then they gave it to uh, to I forgot uh Billy B, uh Benny Boom. Mm. Benny Boom. Dre versus Kanye. Dre versus Kanye. Kanye? Yeah. yeah I, that, that, his, 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 his album was way better than Drake's show. Mm -hmm. like, forget that, John. You said Drake versus Kanye? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said Dre, like Dr. Dre oh, versus no, Kanye. No, no, was Drake. Producer type Drake, stuff. Drake, Drake versus Kanye. Um, yeah, probably still Kanye. Yeah. Yeah, Kendrick Kanye. versus Cole. Kendrick versus Cole. Um, J. Cole. Okay, okay. I normally would have said Kendrick, but I've been listening to J. Cole a lot. Yeah, see, you know, it's like with them, I don't know. I, 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 I tapped into J. Cole a little bit more than Kendrick. Mm -hmm. Kendrick, they both dope. Like, there's no wrong answer with it. But I just like J. Cole a little bit more. His last album put me over the top for that. Like, that, that song, oh, 100 Mil. Duh. That song, 100, bro, I listen to that every day. It's just like, man, he gets it, man. He gets it, bro. Yeah. All right, I'm going to say uh, podcast guest or just you in Spain? Uh, it's, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. See, because... When when we get to a certain level, I probably won't have that many guests on. For sure, for just, sure. Just to be real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right now, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I mean, it helps with the views and stuff like that. But um, my ideal, like, my ideal, like, my ideal vision is not like uh, Joe Rogan. It's more mm. like a Joe Button. Like, mm. sitting yeah, back, yeah, talking. Yeah, talking about yeah, And yeah, then yeah. I get the guests in that I want. It's not like guests, guests, guests. Yeah, guest. No, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah. no just, that's not my with, You know, every once in a while, you get a guest to come yeah. in. Yeah. I, I, that's one thing I do like about Joe Podcast. It's not... It's not guests all the time, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I, I still do like Joe Budden podcast, even though he got Ish and Maul, I me mean Ish and, um, and Ice instead mm -hmm. of Maul Roy. And I like Maul Roy stuff because I feel like them away from Joe Budden, they could talk about more mm -hmm. and they can elaborate a little bit more. I feel like when they was on Joe Budden podcast, whenever they got into some stuff, he had cut them off a little bit mm -hmm. or won't let them, you know what I'm saying, really say what they, they piece. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they better separate now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Man, they doing their thing, man. Man, man, I, like I said, I appreciate you coming on the show, bro. Uh, tell people where you can follow uh, all your all your platforms at and stuff like that, man. All your pages, man. I, I appreciate you having me on, man. For like sure. for real, for real. I, I feel like this is how we grow, man. And deeper than growing, I feel like this is how we build that that group, man. I saw they had like some event with podcasters coming up. Uh, mm -hmm. I, it might have already passed or something like that, but uh, like like a little podcast celebration. I'm like, man, man why don't we get the, the <laughs> mo on these type of things, yeah. man? So it's just like staying locked in on stuff like for that. Sure. But they can definitely follow us on Instagram at br the machine. Uh, follow me on Instagram at uh, Ahmad the Poet. Um, um, follow me on Instagram at The Ancestral Plane. On Facebook at The Ancestral Plane. On um, TikTok at The Ancestral Plane. Follow us on TikTok at Be Art Machine. All of that, man. But uh, for real, for real, just just watch the podcast, <laughs> Breaking the Machine podcast. For Listen sure. to us on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Breaking the Machine podcast. That's all I care about. So, yeah. man, appreciate y'all for having no, me. No, all day, man. I appreciate you coming on, man. Like when well, I be hitting people, I will be like, dang, I ain't got. I, I was doing the number game. I was looking at your numbers like this nigga ain't. Gonna, I mean, my bad. I don't want to call you. <laughs> the dog ain't gonna respond back to me, man. Like you know what I'm saying. Like, nah, but you did. So I, and I appreciate that, man. Because a lot of times people look down on people because of you know what I'm saying. We in the same game. I know what it feels like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. To reach out <laughs> to somebody with six hundred thousand followers and it's like, bro, he gave me the run around, dog. <laughs> he don't know what, who. For he sure. don't know. You know. So <laughs> I know what it's about. That's no. what I, said. I had to show up early. I had to show up on time because I know what it feels no, like. No, for sure. And um, man, we. We always leave the people with some uh, some motivational words, man. You want to leave the people with something they, you know, saying, can, you know. Man, I I would just say, man, you know, stay on your own grind, stay locked in, man. Don't try to uh, flow into the crowd and, and, and try not to be too accessible to people, man. Like if somebody feel comfortable hitting you up on any time of the day, any time of the night, hey, bro, let's do this. They really don't think you're working. They really shitting on your grind for <laughs> real, for real, because they know you're not a man of business, a man of principle, a man of grind. So, man, you got to make people feel uncomfortable to reach out to you. That's how hard your grind is. So just stay locked in on what you're doing. Hey, man, when you need a moment, when you need a break, just take a break. You know, just, just sip your water, man, and just relax and uh, watch some cartoons, man. Just relax. <laughs> for you sure, dig? for sure, man. If you got one follower, you got a million followers, man. Just hey, keep your ground up.
You did. Man, I appreciate you coming on the show. My brother. Ahmad the Poet, man. Shout out to everybody. Episode 98. Breaking it. I'll let you.